Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to MBA News. We welcome you back to Makanda. It's Rhodes graduation season and I am Dick and Judah. We are back at Rhodes for the graduation season. We are here to celebrate students who have done well academically and have made it their business to ensure that they acquire those degrees. So we welcome you back for another joyride, another week of festivities and celebrations of the academic achievements of the students at Rhodes. I am Dick and Judah for MBN News. Stay tuned as we take you along the journey of the graduation ceremony at Rhodes University, Emakanda. Could you comment on why the university <coughs> saw it fit to honor such a day like this? Well, the, uh, there are many reasons why the university saw it fit uh, to honor the Chief Justice in the manner that we have. First, of course, uh, as you all know his story, um, it is an inspiring story. It's a story that young people in far-flung parts of this country can look at and say, I will never be held back by the circumstances in which I have been born or raised. So he defied circumstances of poverty and deprivation. And when given an opportunity, he really made a, a huge success and he now occupies the highest office uh, in, in this country, in, in the legal profession. So, so that is one part. He is a huge inspiration to many young people of this country who may see themselves emulating him. The second thing, of course, uh, he, he personifies moral courage credibility, someone who um, is very thoughtful and as you heard, he was incredibly patient uh, with those who are participating in the state capture hearing. And, and he epitomizes human decency. He is a gentleman of the highest order. So, he epitomizes decency, he epitomizes grace, but he also epitomizes gentleness. Um, and these are the leaders that we would like the young people of this country to look up to and want to emulate going forward. And he has had many detractors, um, insults held at him, but he has been in his responses, he has been very disarming uh, by not engaging at that level, by remaining dignified, and so all his responses in those circumstances, particularly during the state capture um, a commission, and which he shared, shared uh, in an incredibly fair manner. Uh, and so, of course, uh, history will document that he played such a pivotal role in unearthing issues of corruption and malfeasance in this country, not only committed by our elected representatives, but also by the private sector. How the private sector conspired with some of the civil servants in order to loot our resources, resources that could have made a huge change in the lives of ordinary people. You must always remember that the state does not have money. The state gets money from us, the ordinary people. So when you steal public funds, you are not stealing from government. You are stealing from elderly people who pay vet when they go to shop you steal from people who absolutely need those funds. And so he, of course, is someone that uh, we, we look up to, and we are delighted that uh, he very kindly accepted our invitation to honor him in the manner that we have. Uh, and so those are some of the reasons that uh, we, we considered. You, you have in him someone 
who is a moral authority, someone with immense personal integrity. And we lack most of those values and attributes in this country. Uh, and so we are delighted that he is the Chief Justice. He is leading our judiciary. As you heard him this afternoon, he assured us and reassured us that our judiciary is in good hands and that they are part of our line of defense. Uh, and as I indicated, of course, in the end, it is ordinary citizens who are the last line of defense when you have an uncaring um, a government. So those are the reasons. Thank you. Can you shake hands on camera with CJ? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, colleagues. Thank you.